Ibi Guevara and I am the chair of Yola Utah District. We appreciate uh, you being um, here today to, to participate uh, in this conversation. And I will turn it over to Beth, but I want to say Beth, thank you so much for putting this uh, wonderful program together and we are so excited to um, have everybody here. Um, this is a true example of what your life is about. It's really bringing the private and public sector together and, and have this open dialogue on how together we can create better communities for our kids, for our future. As far as UTA is concerned, we are wanting to partner with anyone and everyone who can come together and work with the, whatever community that we're in so that we can expand our opportunities, we can make sure that we're utilizing our existing infrastructure, which was talked about, in a way that is going to add continued value, not just for that particular you know, location, that dot on a map, but for that community. And we know how critical it is to continue to bring people together to do these things. One of the reasons that we're here, one of the things that we really wanted to start integrating is the opportunity to develop what we used to call transit-oriented developments, right? TODs, I think you guys are all familiar with them. We now want to expand that thought. We are really now designing community-oriented um, transit stops, or TOCs, transit-oriented communities, because we recognize the inherent value of making walkable choices, connecting to commercial, connecting to all these other elements, and certainly connecting to transit. We, we have a significant situation, it's not unique to Utah, it's across the entire United States, particularly in the West, uh, where we have um, unparalleled growth, the very first time though, since the pioneer times, we had more in-migration into Utah than we produced our own growth. The natural impact of that is we got a lot of competition for housing. So how do we now take that existing structure and make it, um, you know, so that our cities are no longer, you know, focused only on things within their city boundaries, but they're working regionally with their, um, you know, neighbors, uh, because you can't have something happen in one city and not have it affect their neighbors. And so we said, well, let's take what we're already doing with our regional planning efforts in all of our cities and counties represented there and everybody working together. Let's do the same thing with our density structures. Let's do the same thing as we look at where do we want to put people? How are we going to do that? And what makes sense in different communities based on what the community needs? Now we have a system in place that's around transit hubs uh, so around front runner tracks and um, bus rapid transit and bus depots, draw a half mile radius around it, you have to plan that. It says to the cities, here are the issues that you have to address. You've got to address density, you've got to address traffic, you've got to address sustainability, you've got to address walkability, you've got to address um, uh, community values. And, and so it puts the city in charge of this process and then once the cities are done with their planning, um, it goes to the regional group, and the regional group has a up or down vote on this plan. I just want to emphasize how collaborative this process was. We know we have to do something difficult. We know that people are not going to love this, but this is something that is for the best interest of the state and our communities and our people and our children and our grandchildren. It's going to be a, a great benefit to the citizens of our state going forward. Our principal role, our, our federal role, is to produce the Long Range Transportation Plan, working with our partners. We've got UDOT, UTA in the room, um, other transportation and partners as well as the cities to produce this Long Range Transportation Plan. So the Wasatch Choice Vision overlays the local land use plans, plans that the cities have for their growth with regionally significant transportation infrastructure. The transportation side of that includes um, transit as well as roadway and biking infrastructure, regionally significant bike paths. Um, and the land use side of that is principally made up of centers. Um, these centers are where the cities have said, you know, we know we're growing, this is where we're going to focus that growth. The transit system was an incredible investment. I don't think anybody would disagree that it was made with a lot of foresight by our state and our region. If we continue to work together, both public and private sectors, to implement those centers, plan for station areas, as is required by House Bill 462, elevating the importance of those transit stations, recognizing that that is a major investment that we've made as a region, 
and also recognizing the, the local context of each of those stations. Each station is so different, and it's so important that the city is involved. Pre public and private sector come together, look at what that's, the opportunities are at that specific station, and make it the best station it can be. This really is important. Um, it's important to us as a growing city to work with other communities, other community leaders, to really um, try to help uh, spread the understanding and get good inp input and, and solid buy-in that people's greatest fears don't have to be. My interpretation of people's greatest fear is losing their quality of life. It costs a lot of money to buy a home anywhere, anywhere in Utah. People put their life savings, their investment, their career, their family. We've all chosen to be here. We all have our different reasons why we love being here. And people don't want to lose their quality of life. And it's, it's critical that we work together to help people understand that if we make good development choices, the growth does not have to eliminate our quality of life. We can maintain the quality of life that we enjoy, the investment that we've all made in our homes, our communities, our families, everything here. We can keep that if we employ these principles properly and work together to build these transit-oriented communities to make sure that we're not making decisions that are very short-sighted. The vision is rarely popular. It's, it's such a, a fast-paced world and we all get instant gratification. That's just what we live in. Vision is not that. We have to lead with vision and we have to plan with vision. None of us are seeking to eliminate quality of life. Developers aren't looking for that. Elected officials aren't looking for that. None of us want to eliminate quality of life. We want to protect it, think regionally and act locally. This energy and dynamic follows its way to the capital. I think the collaborative nature you've heard is uniquely Utah. This Garden Park as a transit-oriented community, I can walk to tracks. It's a 10-minute walk right there. Now a community library, there's a hospital right there, a grocery store this way. But think of the accessibility and options this gives a demographic you wouldn't normally think through of being transit-oriented. But what an unbelievable lifestyle adds to those folks where they came something quieter, they don't want to get in their car as much, they can get on the train and go, what a cool thing. Frankly, we are continuously looking for opportunities around transit. Since 2011, 63% of our multifamily units in Salt Lake County have been on the transit corridors within a half a mile. 50% of our affordable and restricted units since 2011 have been along the transit corridors. Under construction right now, 68% of our units are within a half mile of the transit corridors. Of the planned units, permitted and planned, 72% of the units are going to the transit corridor. The market loves the fixed rail, the market guys in here know this, the fixed rail infrastructure, BRT2, we can make a long-term investment on the private sector side because we know that amenity in our world is not going anywhere. But we need true mixed use, which is employment centers that are accessible to, by transit. We need a transit system. Like in my case, I can walk to transit, I can't walk to work. So we need a transit system that supports this model of transit-oriented communities beyond the rail lines. We need good functioning bus lines, so on and so forth. We want more planning around stations. And cities, your land use authority drive the ship, but new model, it's a regional system, we're gonna get regional partners involved in that process. For the development community in this room, monster win. Monster win motivated by the locals saying, we want our peers holding us accountable. That is a seismic shift in public policy and land use. It's focused on the transit piece, but the fact that our partners on the other side of the table were willing to go there, huge. As housing becomes more and more expensive, Yes, we're going to start exporting our kids, but we're going to lose momentum in our economy in a big way. We may not be able to manage every aspect of lumber prices, da 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 da, but through transit, we can unlock a different piece of affordability and get to a place that we're unlocking the economic value we have in place. Thank you, and thank you to everyone on the panel. They did a tremendous job. If you give them a round of applause. Please.